All right guys, so a question I've been getting a lot lately is which bike do you prefer? A Suron X or a Talaria Sting? Luckily I've got both bikes here, so I'm gonna ride them back to back and we'll find out. For reference, both bikes are completely stock. Nothing has been changed. I'll point out the key differences between the Suron and the Talaria, but this video is to see how they ride and not to get too granular with the detailed specifications. So let's go through the quick bit on what makes these bikes different on paper and then go see how that translates to the ride. The Suron has been around for several years and has remained relatively unchanged. This 2022 version puts out 6 kilowatts of power and has a 60 volt, 32 amp hour battery. The bike utilizes a primary belt drive mated to a secondary chain drive. It's got a 48 tooth sprocket, 19 by 1.4 inch rims with CST tires measured in 70, 100, 19, front and rear. This Suron is suspended by a KKE fork and a KKE shock. The bike weighs approximately 110 pounds, and the current MSRP from Shock Bikes is $4,600. The Talaria, on the other hand, is very new on the scene. This 2022 also produces 6 kilowatts of power and has a 60 volt, 38 amp hour battery. The bike utilizes a gearbox instead of the belt drive found on the Suron. This bike came with a 44 tooth rear sprocket. The rear wheel is 19 by 1.6 inches with an 80 119 CST tire. And in the front, it has a 19.14 inch wheel with a 70 119 CST tire. This Talaria is suspended by a DNM fork and a fast ace shock. Some other notable features on the Talaria is that it comes equipped with an egg rider display with easy to change regen modes, a slightly wider rear swing arm, and a different linkage design. The bike weighs approximately 128 pounds, and the current MSRP from eBikezilla is $4,200. The first thing that I wanted to do was test the range on these bikes. So I made sure both batteries were fully charged, made sure the tire pressure was set to 20 PSI, sag was set correctly by way of my Motul slacker, and each fork was set to 160 PSI with compression and rebound zeroed out. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you've seen this turn track that I'm in in these shots. Yes, it's boring. Yes, it's flat. But it makes for a great place to test range because it's consistent, and that's why I like to use it. We'll come back to this later in the video, though. Before we go up into the mountains and ride these bikes on some Colorado single track, I want to tell you guys about the awesome sponsor of this video. I'm excited to announce that I'm working with Omaze to offer you the chance to win an unplugged Tesla S Apex Plaid. Not to mention, the sweepstakes supports a great cause, the Juju Foundation. So go to omaze.com slash electric cycle rider to enter for your chance to win this Tesla. This car is ridiculous, you guys. It's got 1,020 horsepower and 1,050 pound-feet of torque. That is insane. With all that power, this thing can go from 0 to 60 in 1.99 seconds, and it tops out at 200 miles per hour. If I win, you will for sure be seeing some four-wheel burnouts on this channel. If you're not familiar with Omaze, they're a company that partners with charities and fundraising events and gives people the chance to win some amazing prizes, like this Tesla we're looking at here, all while helping nonprofits make the world a better place, this one specifically being the Juju Foundation. The Juju Foundation is a nonprofit dedicated to the support of youth initiatives and lifting the spirits of those in need. So, for your chance to win an unplugged Tesla S Apex Plaid, go to omaze.com slash electric cycle rider and enter now. All right, back to the Suron and Solaria showdown. 
Okay, sir on X, let's get this thing going. All you gotta do really is there's a breaker underneath the battery here, you wanna switch that, and then it's just key on. You've got sport mode and EP mode. I'm gonna ride it in sport and uh, just twist some throttle and go. All right, why not start with a little water crossing here? And by little, I mean my feet are completely soaked now. Well, this Suron is as fun as all the other ones that I've owned. Just a light, nimble, super fun little bike to rip around on. If you've watched a bunch of my videos about the Suron X, I'm gonna sound like a little bit of a broken record here. But you gotta ride this thing like a mountain bike. At least in stock form you do. You can't just brute your way through stuff. You gotta kind of be light on the bike. And I'm gonna take it a little bit easier than I normally do just because uh, I don't wanna pop a tube or anything, which happens to me a lot <laughs> when I'm riding the stock stuff a little hard, so at least out here. Not that I'm like riding the bike crazy hard, but it's just the environment out here. Just a lot of like sharp rocks and stuff like that. <clears throat> Easy to get a pinch flat out here is what I'm trying to say. Woo! So fun though on the smooth stuff. Speaking of sounding like a broken record, it's no surprise in stock form that I immediately notice the Suron feels cramped. I don't know if it's the new KKE fork setup, or different spacing for the headset, but it does feel improved from models I've ridden in the past. Regardless, it's a really small bike and it needs bar risers or taller bars. A little bit of a hill climb here. Let's see how the stock bike does. Pick your line wisely. Got some roots, pretty loose. Easy. Easy peasy for the Suron. The lightweight nature of the Suron makes it handle technical climbs with relative ease, so long as you have enough traction to keep getting power to the ground. The KKE fork and shock felt like nice upgrades overall. The fork still has a bit of flex like you'd expect, but I think it's an improvement over some of the other suspension that the bike used to come with. Speaking of flex, it's something the Suron is kind of known for. There are ways to improve it, but let it be known that the bike does have a bit of flex in rougher terrain, especially from the rear swing arm area. You already know what I think of the Suron. I love it when it's in the right environment. For me, that means smooth, flowy single track. I think that's where this bike shines. For others, that could mean dirt jumps or free riding, but this bike definitely excels in the smooth and flowy terrain. All right guys, out here riding single track on the Suron X and my initial impressions are the same that they always have been. In four years, this bike has not changed a whole lot. You know, there's a lot of little nuances that are different, but it's still the same fun Suron that you've come to expect. It's fun, it's peppy. I would not call it fast, you know, it's, it's quick. There are so many modifications that you can do to this Suron X and uh, there's like a lot of great companies that are making awesome parts for these bikes. I'll, I'll be talking to you more about that later, but if you want to see some of my suggestions for parts, I'll put links in the description. Yeah, overall, it's a Suron X. You guys know about this bike. It's super fun. What can you say about it for the price point? It's an amazing bike. And uh, yeah, let's go hop on the Talaria now and see how that bike compares to the Suron X. All right, startup procedure on the Talaria is a little bit different, but also pretty similar. So you turn the key and then you will see your display power up. You probably can't see this because of the sun, but it's flashing weight 
up top. And what you want to do then is press the start button here, and then it says ready. Uh, you've got sport mode and eco mode like you do on the Suron, but you just control it with pushing this button here. And there's a few other uh, settings, uh, one of them being your regen or uh, engine braking. So it's a one, two, three. I'm going to put it on two because I think that's similar to where the Suron is currently. And uh, we'll start there. All right, I got to give a shout out to GoPro and not in a good way. Uh, the last like 20 minutes of me talking to you guys about this bike was not recorded because the GoPro Hero 10 likes to just shut itself off randomly, even when you've got full battery. So GoPro, if you're watching this, please fix that. What I was saying when my GoPro shut off was that the first thing I noticed is that the Talaria is definitely a bigger bike. It sits taller and the cockpit feels more spacious. That does come with a bit of a caveat though. The bike rides higher in the rear than it does in the front. That seems at least partially due to the subframe design when paired with the current shock length, and the fact that it's running a slightly larger tire in the rear. This causes the bike to react in a few different ways. First is that the seat slopes down and pushes you forward on the bike. Is it terrible? No. But it was obvious to me. The other is because of this stink bug effect, the front end of the bike feels a little unstable at speed. Again, it feels like it's a direct result of the front end sitting lower than the rear. I think this bike would be a great candidate for a 21 inch front wheel to remedy that effect. It'll make the bike bigger, but it's something I'm keen to try out. Despite the unstable front end feel, the Talaria overall feels steady and planted. It could be the frame design or the extra weight, but the bike flexes less than the Suron. A noticeable downside is that the battery in the Talaria moves around a lot. It has a rubber spacer on the battery hatch to help keep it in place, but it needs more than that. Mine was bouncing around in there like crazy when I was riding it. You can hear it here. In the power department, I feel like the Talaria has more snap right off the crack of the throttle, but it immediately signs off whereas the Suron pulls stronger through the mid-range. That power does come back on for the Talaria toward the top end, where the Suron begins to sign off. So, it's a different power curve overall, and one that I would simply call less aggressive. Keep in mind though, these are both running different sprockets, with the Suron having a 48 tooth, and the Talaria having a 44. So, I think it's worth testing a bigger sprocket on the Talaria. The stock throttle on the Talaria personally feels a bit better to me. It feels like it has more dead band, or more of a traditional cable feel, whereas the current Suron throttle feels very digital and sometimes hard to ride smoothly. Remember that range test I talked about in the beginning of the video? Well, I rode both bikes from 100% battery down to 10%, and the results were pretty neck and neck. The Suron made it 16.8 miles, and the Talaria made it 16.4 miles. I must be slightly quicker on the Talaria though, because my average speed was 1 mile per hour quicker, coming in at 20.8 miles per hour compared to Suron's 19.9. So which bike would I pick? Man, that is a difficult question because I think it's really dependent on who it is that I'm talking to. Um, man, I don't know. It depends on what is important to you, how, if you're going to modify it at all, how much you're going to modify it, what, what, what it is you're going to do to modify it, because I think both bikes need to be modified. And, um, yeah, it just really depends on like what your overall budget is going to be to, to make some changes. I would say like, if I'm just leaving the bike completely stock or making a couple minor adjustments, I'd probably go Talaria, but most of the things that the Talaria fixes can also be remedied with a Suron. And there's a lot of modification out there, a lot of parts out there to modify the Suron. So that is a, a tough one to answer, but 
sorry to waffle on it. I'm, I'm gonna keep these bikes for a bit longer and start modifying them actually. So maybe that'll help me answer that question a little bit for you guys, but um, you can't go wrong with either bike really. They're both great bikes. Like whichever one you get a better deal on, that's another big part of it. Like this video will live on for a while and uh, prices will change. So that will be dependent on which bike is better. But uh, yeah, both great bikes. You can't really go wrong with either. Just some, some differences uh, on different departments of the bike. The Talaria has fixed a lot that the Suron needs to be fixed. And I hope that Suron makes some of these changes that the Talaria has already made. That's for sure. All right, guys. Well, I thank you for watching this far into the video. Don't forget. Did you see that Tesla? That thing looks sick. Don't forget to enter to win that thing. I know I'm going to do that and uh, use the code in the description to do that. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys soon. Thanks.